What's up gamers, Zfarls here with another exciting edition of This Week in Madden Show 176. I've got a free Christmas offense coming your way. Wanted to say happy all holidays out there to all of This Week in Madden Nation. So we're going to get into that. We've got Ultimate Freeze. We also have a great, great game of the week going on at the end of this show. So I just got home to Boston. Gibbs is home with his family, so it's a special show tonight, but I think you're going to love it. For the Brain Trust, make sure to check your Twitch messages. If you're a subscriber to the channel on Saturday, we sent out two videos from MStack's Titan Scheme. And of course, uh, if you're in the actual Facebook group, there was a great new post from AdRobs detailing a little offensive scheme he likes to run. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that Facebook group over the weekend as he uh, towards the new year when he posts that scheme in there. So we'll have more content coming for all our subs. Thanks to everybody for supporting the show, and let's get into this week in Madden with Z Farls today. So we're home here on the PS4. We log into Ultimate Team. The first thing we see, of course, Teddy Bridgewater and Geno Atkins, two players we decided we would not be going after. Uh, we're going to focus on the Mariota, and there's just too many DTs going on, but I want to go into the auction house here on this week in Madden Show 176 to talk about some of the ultimate freeze players that came out. Now, you've got your ghost of Christmas present, future, and past, and then you have your out of position players. So I'm just going to state at this current time, no player is worth the cost of this video. This video was made earlier in this afternoon, so prices probably not have not come down that much. One of the reasons I like this Armstead so much is because I thought he would be lower in cost. If you look at him, he's a 90 right end. He's got 95 strength with 95 block shed. That's tremendous for the run game, mixed with 92 power move, and he's six foot seven. The image I had of him in my mind was the image of that on his player card, skinny. And so I was shocked when he was that beefy and strong. And I think he's a great player, but not for that price yet. Clowney, we love him at all his additions so far. 91 block shed, tremendous power move, great hit power, good size. He can be a guy to user. Mariota, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the game for short, medium, speed, and throw on the run. His deep still very, very good. I think he's the guy now. I think his 88 comes down in price and makes him super reasonable. But this Mariota is probably the best quarterback in the game, price related. The Freeman with his 94, 96, 95 agility, excel combination, just the whole package right here. Great elusive, great truck, great carry, kind of a good mix of everything. And once his price comes down a little bit, he's really, really balanced and good. The Odell, I do not like. We could sit here and talk about Odell, his uh, 99 card. But just with 90 catch and traffic, that's not enough for my team. DeAndre Hopkins, see, here's the deal. 98 catch and traffic, 95 spec. To me, that's the combo you're looking for. You don't want, you know, 99-90 with Odell. You want more of that mixture. That's Irvin level, in my opinion, from Hopkins, who's 88 finally gets justified up uh, there. This is great. Uh, the Volmer, he's finally got his run block up to a reasonable level. He's 6'8", and he's got 95 strength, 96 pass block, so he's going to be a pass block beast, but not for that cost. Cam, Bam, Chancellor, we've been waiting for him to get an item for a while now. This gets him up to 90 speed, which is a good threshold. He's got 99 hit power, but there's just too many. I know we didn't have enough strong safeties. Now I feel like we have too many, and Although he's at 87 zone, which is pretty decent, I just don't like the play rec, and I don't know if he's ever going to feel fast on a Madden field. That's, I don't know. Uh, Cunningham, so if you want Mariota, you want the medium accuracy. If you want Cunningham, you want the deep accuracy. Mariota's going to be slightly faster because of acceleration, but everything else is pretty darn equal across the board. So remember, Mariota equals medium, Cunningham equals deep. And we got to see if this Cunningham can actually throw deep I know he's got the rating, but that was a struggle with his first item for me. Finneran has 98 Ken traffic, 95 specs. So that's the same as the Hopkins. Obviously, he's six foot five. I think Hopkins has slightly better route running. Don't fall in love with the name Finneran. I think the Hopkins matches up pretty nicely. A release is a little better for Finn. Storm and Norman, 93 speed, 98 zone coverage. 
98, hands in the face of Odell. I'm kidding. Um, this card is a monster. Tremendous play rack. Great press. Really, really good. Um, if you don't have Dion, Night Train, all those guys, he's the next guy up. Derek Brooks is the only card I would really, really want. He has great press and really good man. He's the new 3-3-5 odd outside linebacker if you want to play man coverage. So as we look at him, good catch. <clears throat> this guy can pretty much do it all. And uh, he's got the pursuit. He's got the 93 zone. So you get him, 93 Brandon Marshall. Now you got two linebackers with 93 zone. That's insane. It's totally insane. And I'm going to find a way to scheme this guy. If you scheme Brooks right, he's one of the best. Revis, 96 CB. Has 92 speed, which is slightly slow. I love to see the play rack in the man. You know, with Hayden's of the world, I'm a fan of that. But Dion has 99 man, 100 man. He's got burnt a little bit for me. So even though he has the press, I got to make sure that speed can hold up before I tell you to go spend a milli on Revis. In straight hand, man, finesse move at 199 Excel is amazing. But you're only really paying for those two stats. Like the Armstead, so much stronger, so much more block shetty. I don't think so. Unless you're scheming this guy something super, super specific pass down wise. 93 Aaron Lynch has the Excel, and you can't go there with my man Strahan, who is my dude. Like, but it just. These cards are super limited, so hopefully the prices come down. But you. And then talk about scheming. These are the guys you got to scheme. Steve Smith can't be used, I don't think. Antonio Brown. <laughs> I don't think you can use him. I think that there's going to be other better quarterback items. Uh, Kobe Fleener, free safety. I like that he's six foot six, but you got to go get the Calvin. Like if you really want to do this, do the Calvin. 88 speed there. Decent user for super budget, but I don't think so. Uh, Pat Peter receiver, 88 spec, 85 catching traffic. You, you can't use him. I mean, you could maybe try him at punt returner, but just not possible. Tim Tebow, just super novelty item, 80 speed half pack, 90 XL, 86 truck. It's awesome. I hope every somebody does a Tebow, Tebow, Tebow formation with his all of his guys. Same thing with Sherman. I hope you get a Tebow quarterback, a Tebow other uh, draft champs quarterback, and a half pack, and find a way to wildcat all three of them in on the field and score a touchdown and put it on YouTube. But it would just be for fun. It wouldn't be for real life. Denard Robinson, I loved his base addition. His quarterback there is not terrible. Antonio Gates, people say if you get him at this linebacker, you can actually play him at tight end. I believe you could always sub in a middle linebacker at tight end as an option. So maybe this is something that you try out. I would double check on that. I haven't done it myself yet. But I did play um, against him, I think, in draft champs. But it's not even that good of a tight end. He's balanced, but he's not the guy at tight end. So... I don't really know what you do. Marshawn Lynch, 97 hit power with 92 excel right outside linebacker. That's not – see, that's something where, all right, can we get him – can we find him a, a role if we're still a newer player? Like this Sheldon Richardson's not good. Even if he was a real fullback, he would only have, you know, no strength uh, – not, not as much strength as the normal edition of himself. So – these are my gold looks at these guys. You know I love Donald Penn. He'll be making a spot on the team because he's super He's super niche. 94 strength, 81 run block. I mean, that's Vance is not that far off. You put him at receiver, you run inside zone, you dominate, you win. And Dominican Sue has 97 kick power. Uh, this is a guy that you do want. You put him in at kicker on kickoffs, you Gibbs kick, and you force hit sticks. So some of these guys, what you would do if they're defenders that are playing offense, you find the spot on special teams that they go, and then you put them there, and they get hits and tackles for you. So that's one thing you can do. Like you could sub Richardson at fullback or Poe at fullback. Now he's on your special teams. Uh, this Tom Brady for fake punts would be what you'd use him for. You know, he's not the best punter kick power-wise, but he's got good throw power. So if you really wanted to run a fake punt offense, that play's kind of tough. Um, you could do that. Tavon Austin, I think this is a really, really good halfback. His, they dropped his carry to make him you know, not be the guy you see everywhere. But uh, I do like that Tavon Austin. I think he'd be a good kick returner uh, as well. Shout out to everyone in the chat watching this week in Madden. I just, I'm home for the holidays, so I just taped this just an hour ago. 
um, voiced it over. We'll be here in the chat, chatting with you. If you got questions, tweet them. Game of the week coming up is tremendous. I'm going to say no on the Devin Hester. The Edelman is pretty decent uh, quarterback. Like His stats aren't that bad. He's got more throw power than Ryan Fitzpatrick, so keep that in mind. Everybody loves this Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays is that guy. I would buy this for 100 k I think he's one of the only players that is at his current value. 93 speed, 95 excel. User control, right outside linebacker, beast. He's, he's got 98 hit power. Um, you know, he's not going to block shed the best, but you're going to be user and making plays. Not the best zone, but this guy has one role, and that's to force fumbles. 81 spec, 98 pow. He's tall. Uh, everybody loved Taylor Mays last year, and now it's good to see him in Madden as a, a linebacker. Charles Woodson, 94 and 88 is not too bad. He just retired, so if you're making a Raider squad, this could be your guy. But you can't pay a premium for those stats, which you can find elsewhere for super cheap. You could get four Amari Coopers. Julius Peppers, I played against him in Draft Champs. Six foot seven, 90 catch, but unless you can get him on deep, it's kind of a novelty item. Maybe he's good on uh, special teams. Poe, now this Poe is actually good. 100 strength, 95 run block, 95 truck. Like, that's actually pretty good. Um, whereas the Richardson wasn't actually any good. So I would consider this Poe, you can't pay 100 stacks because that's what you'd get for Sherman. But, you know, if he comes down a bit, he could be fun. Plus, like we said, special teams. Strong safety Julio, 90 speed, 90 hit power, 86 zone, 6 foot 3. This is pretty good. If he starts to make some good animations... Uh, he's he's pretty nice. He's not Calvin, but he's you know you can really only use her one guys one guy, and you can only really have one of those guys on your field at all times. Uh, we have gameplay with Walter Payton coming up on the game of the week. Ninety four speed, eighty eight throw power, eighty two deep. Can he get it done? Uh, that's the question. And what would be a good scheme? Well, I've got a scheme that you could run with this Walter Payton. So let's uh, stay tuned to keep watching this week of Madden for that. Calvin Johnson is the guy. I saw Rose Bowl make an incredible pick at that really good animation with Calvin. 6'5", 92 speed, 93 hit power, and 80 zone. I mean, this is the guy I would pick to probably use her. You could cover the most ground. He's Anthony Barr size, which is amazing. It still reminds me that Anthony Barr is that amazing. So if you're Calvin, you know, he's... He's got still got the the catch stats, which which definitely helped. Ninety eight spec, so that's who I'm using. Sean Taylor's probably out of the mix. Uh, I don't really use her free safety, but I'll probably play him at strong safety. Clay Matthews, ninety five power move, ninety two excel. Those are good ratings. I believe the new Robert Ayers though has the same of those two ratings, and also can't play again in the run with seventy seven and eighty two strength block shed combo. So why wouldn't you just get the airs? I love Clay Matthews. He computer hit sticks, and now he's got a lot of versions out there. The more Clay Matthews, the better, I say, in Ultimate Team. But this one doesn't really do it for me, uh, personally. I'm, I'm in on the Calvin. I think I'm in on the Walter Payton for the scheme I'm going to show you guys. And uh, that's pretty much it, along with Taylor Mays, for out-of-position players. I really like what they did, though. And I love that there's a lot of golds and... Uh, people will be seeing them, you know, and you, you got to identify if you see your opponent with these guys. So you got to look and say, who's, what are they going to, what are they possibly going to do with Poe at fullback right now besides fullback dive? Are they going to throw him a pass? Probably not. So keep that in mind. And that's uh, what we just checked out the auction house. Now let's jump into practice mode and give you our free Carolina offensive scheme. And this will work with Walter Payton quarterback. All right, guys, Carolina Panthers offense, jump into game. The split Panther has those nice table routes on curl flats and corner strike. There's a read option. There's an inside zone. There's the poor shovel option. So that formation is a possibility. Uh, the gun heavy Panther is a good red zone formation. Similar to what we do with the Wildcat, you would motion one of those flanker end tight ends across and just try and run up the middle. The gun ace is great anytime you have two tight ends, say in draft champs. There's a nice table route in one of the plays on the top, uh, Z dig. So you could go with that. And then you would just kind of make adjustments to the tight ends. 
you'd use hitch corners to throw corners. You'd use slants and drags to the tight ends a lot. The reason I did want to look at this playbook is the Gun Ace Twins. So you have to play posts. That's what you would come out in because it's not a quick audible. And then you've got the QB power also. So this play smash is what you might think you would want, but it's already a pass. Uh, the problem with this formation from the Panthers is the quick audible is not an inside zone. So, you know, now you're in trouble. You've got the tight end corner. But as, as you see on that tight end corner, it breaks sort of funny off the line of scrimmage, which all that really means is, like, it takes an extra second to get going. Um, I don't love it. Uh, when you go to this play here, if you make a, uh, the flat on the left, then you can check down. So you're going to do the corner flat streak combo on the left. That's what makes this formation good. We saw a lot of this during the Madden Challenge with, I believe, Tweezy uh, hitting the corner out from this formation a couple times for big yards. I want to say it was against Neff. So I think he was doing something similar to that. But uh, this Gun Ace Twins is one of those playbooks, uh, one of those formations where every player in the Madden Challenge, when they didn't get the playbook they wanted, they were like, oh, I got Gun Ace Twins. I'll be okay. And like we said, the reason is the tough alignment, the play posts, and then, of course, the inside zone. So this is now the inside zone. you got to come out in it, I think. Um, and generally, you're going to want to cut it off the left edge. That's where you're going to get the most consistent of your run game. But you can always take it up the middle to keep the three yards going, like if the edge gets sealed. And generally, it's going to be really hard to seal the edge and the middle. There we saw the safeties were blitzing. And so we audibled out of the play to smash. We tried to go deep, <clears throat> but we couldn't hit the pass. So... You see the inside zone. That's how you can go up the middle, like we talked about. You've seen me do it a million times. If you don't know how to run inside zone by this point in the season, you're struggling. You're struggling. You're behind. Uh, you might have just got the game for Christmas. That's okay. Just know that inside zone's the best run in the game. This is a pretty good formation to run it from, too, because you have two tight ends on the line. you got a seven-man line, so you're going to get a hat on a hat, and then you just need to find who's going to get open. <clears throat> so... You see the tight end corner works the same as it does in every formation. There's nobody else over on the right side of the field, so he's got a pretty good chance to win, and Greg Olson's going to do that uh, nicely. The PA play gets you a shot at a corner route on the left, which you like, but you got to make that drag combo to get, get it done for yourself. Um, anytime you, you slant or drag the tight, tight ends from this formation makes it super, super tough. You can always run with the quarterback. That is super important to remember the play posts is what we're going to go over right now this is kind of the the play that <clears throat> makes this formation worth it now the problem is yeah <clears throat> inside zone and posts you need to come out in either one uh, here we take a qb power off the right edge and we're going to have something for qb power this is not the formation i think you should run qb power from here we play maker to the left we try and motion uh the halfback over. You'll see what we have coming up from that. <clears throat> so the Panthers have QB power in a lot of formations. And uh, let's just say if you're looking to have some fun this holiday season, we'll have that for you. So you can come out in, in the power, but you'd rather come out in inside zone, but you got to come out in post. So that's when people say like, hey, does anybody use the Carolina Panthers playbook? And people are like, eh, no, I used to. It's not really that good anymore. It's like, well, why was it not good anymore? It was just, it was probably the best playbook in Madden 13. It was disgusting in Madden 13. And then uh, Madden 25, it had Buck Sweep, which was probably one of the best plays in the game. You know, I know people ch chose the Niners, I, me personally, over the Panthers, but you could really use either. And then Madden 15, it wasn't as strong. But how can it just not be good in Madden 16? Well, the reason is because inside zones aren't the quick audible in some of the bread and butter formations so any playbook this year that has like these new spread sets like the panthers got them in 13 and none of the new teams that are running them now like the jets the dolphins the vikings they all got them this year so when they put them in this year they said all right let's stack an inside zone as the quick audible down whereas in 13 the idea was like let's have a draw because draws were nasty in 13 <clears throat> And so the Panthers never got updated 
in these like great formations like Gun Ace Twins, it was great that they had this three years ago, but now what was effective three years ago isn't effective anymore, and now the new formations that have Gun Ace Twins, now the new playbooks that have the Gun Ace Twins formation have like updated quick audibles, and now they're much better than the Carolina Panthers playbook. That's why I'm a huge fan of giving us the, op- the ability to set our quick audibles. It makes your scheme much, much tougher. But that's that's the QB power. We'll go over that in depth more from a different formation. But the play posts in inside zone, those are your two quote-unquote money plays. We've got the halfback angle. Here you see we go to the flat. We, we rack it up, and we get a big gain uh, by throwing it up field with a pass lead and going for the rack catch. So this is a good play. You could always drag Greg Olson on the right side of the screen. Just getting that timing down, that consistency is going to make this play the challenge because they're going to have to stop inside zone off the left edge, so they're going to want to blitz somebody from the left side of the screen. Here, you get the halfback coming underneath on an aggressive blitz, and we're able to pick it up. So that's what makes the angle route super tough is angle routes I don't love like I did, say, fullback trail last year, but at the right time, they're backbreaking, plus mixed with table routes from other uh, sets, they're pretty deadly. Um, <clears throat> if people start to overplay the table route to the flat, then you've got the corner route, which is pretty much always going to win one on one if you got a decent enough tight end with route running against the linebacker. And um, you know, it's just it's free money. Like you can be terrible at this game and throw that without really looking, and you're going to complete it like six out of ten times. That's why. Uh, but you could always then drag Greg Olson. Here you see this opens up the corner, so finally we get to hit that corner for a huge gain. I think when people see this play, they're like, oh, i got to throw that corner on the first, my first time, my second time. But you saw us hit that flat the first couple times, and now you see the opportunity for that corner to finally get open. So um, that waiting on that is what's going to make this play efficient. You can then motion out Stewart. Um, you could streak him when you motion him out. You're not going to get any protection though to really always wait to go deep if you're empty in the backfield so you know here we nobody really slides over we want to go with a, a deep pass downfield but we get overthrow so just by with some quick motions you can really mess up uh, what you want to do you could also motion the slot left guy uh, to get better run blocking and then mess with your opponent Thanks to everyone in the chat for stopping in to This Week in Madden Show 176 Holiday Edition. Z Farrell's home at his parents' house. I'm in my parents' basement where it all started, guys. And so this is a special episode for me to uh, be able to record for you guys. And um, I'm glad you all came in. This will be on YouTube tonight. Just recorded earlier today. So the content's super fresh. And we've got a little Carolina Panthers offensive scheme going on right now for you. We're about to get into what I consider, you know, a really, really fun way to play the game and see if you can make this work as a great scheme online. So we just looked at the Gun Ace Twins, and this was the inside zone, the posts, the QB power. You've got Smash. Um, those are some things you can do. Now, the Gun Doubles offset is something I want to work because they got this Shark halfback wheel. And they've got verticals, but they just don't really have, you know, they've got inside zone, but it's offset. You know what? You know we love gun doubles, but we don't love gun doubles offset. And they don't quite have, I mean, you can make that sale play that I use, and you're going to see a lot of this sale play in the game of the week, but it's not a quick audible, and so you miss out. Like, you don't have a corner route as a stock audible. And that's another reason Carolina, in my opinion, is just not the playbook it was. But the inside zone works pretty much the same, even though it's offset, the halfback standing two steps behind the quarterback, whereas normally he's lined up right next to him. Sometimes that actually helps you, and sometimes it makes the handoff angle a little bit funny, and you can't cut as quickly. So it's really like your own personal feel. But th these four vertical plays, like you... Right there, that's a high pass to Greg Olson. And that's what you think should happen every single time. And that's what I thought was going to happen when the game was coming out. But you overthrow the ball too much on high passes. And you can't trust that throw. You can make it. 
I think bad players throw that more than good players because they just like, oh, I can just streak the tight end. It looks like it's going to be open, so it'll probably be open. Um, there we use playmaker. But that that throw like doesn't exist because you can't really throw it inside, and if it's man, they'll cut underneath and pick it off. And, and it's just another reason where, why like single back ace with two tight ends and, and gun ace twins – to, to four verticals people in the seam like never really took off for me this year you haven't really been able to throw that since Madden 13 and that's a good thing because it was Madden 13 was impossible to stop inside led pass leads two tight ends it was like the hardest thing in the world to do you wanted to throw in most Maddens you want to throw to the outside of the field like on corners but in in those Maddens the middle of the field like the direct prime meridian from where the ball was snapped was the hardest thing to defend because you could pass lead inside or outside and the defenders like didn't react to the pass lead so it's much much better this year but that throw that I made it looked totally normal right there and like why don't you do that more but because it's not always there is the answer and I don't find it as consistent as I would want it to be so that's that's what I'm trying to show you guys the FL spot is what I was talking about this is exactly the same basically as the sail play so you would streak circle You'd motion Kotri over, drag him, and the problem is you don't have the table route to the halfback. So you have the halfback on a swing route. And so we take the sack, and I want to go into instant replay and actually like show you the difference between the table route. If you're a new player, you're probably thinking, well, the halfback's running to the right side of the field. What does it matter? Why does it matter? Because look at the halfback. You're going to throw that to him. He's going to catch it at the 25 and he's you want him to catch it right there at the 35 and then run you don't want him to catch it at the 25 so here the defense is in cover two we we're gonna swing it out he's gonna get crushed and tackled and you shouldn't throw the table out either against cover two but every now and then you can and you still will have success but we'll throw it again here and look, we get to the 30-yard line. That's not good enough. The table route, you're getting to the 40-yard line. You're picking up eight more yards a clip. And that's just one thing that, t that Carolina doesn't have. They have, you know, that, that, that route causes that play to be bad, even though it has all the other routes. It's remarkable the little details in Madden that make a playbook good or make a playbook bad. And the trips... Wide trips, tight end slot, they have a, a shot play. So this is the one with Buck Sweep, Madden 25, Buck Sweep, most OP play of all time in Madden 25. A PA wide receiver in, you could take a deep shot with, and then they've got Panthers wide sale, and then they've got QB power. So this formation is pretty decent. I don't want to run QB power, though, towards my three receivers to the right because um, then you're inviting receiver blocking ratings into the party too much. And it's not really ever going to be something you're going to win without subbing in beef guys. So, and then you can't pass as well unless you got the money for Heinz Ward and Brandon Marshall. So I'm not going to do that. They have four verticals. Everyone knows four verticals. That route right there. Even the computer manages to read it and pick it off. So, you know, QB power is good with a broken tackle, but... This isn't the formation. This is not the Xmas offense formation. There will be a time and a place for quarterback power. I recommend you turn on your Xbox and get ready to live lab it with us right here because it's about to go down. Um, Panthers playbook. Z Farrell's here. This week in Madden 176. Just taped this earlier today. I'm home for the holiday. Had to make sure you guys got yourself a show. I'm having a blast right now. Energy level is high. Trips tight end is the formation for QB power look at this little run right here so they have a shovel option uh speed option which is not good do not use that but the qb power look at how the defense aligns against this and do this i saw qb power in every formation and i kept trying it in every formation like when is it gonna hit right here you would take qb power up the middle uh, but see you can motion this guy across get an extra blocker you don't always want to go to the edge with QB power. That's the key. If you're going to run this as an every down run, you're going to buy Walter Payton out of position quarterback, sub him in, and run QB power. You've got to be willing to take when it's third and two, you got to go right up the gut. You can't go off the edge to the right. Um, 
you're going to want to try and hit the edge, but you've got to be willing to go just up the middle and take it. Um, so here, we're trying to use motion to our advantage to get an extra blocker in our scheme. And I said earlier, I don't love running towards the side of the receivers, but I do in this situation. So you playmaker the run to the left with the right stick, and then you motion the halfback, and boom, look at that QB power right there. So I just think this formation is super, super tough for inside zone and everything you have to do to it. No, I've not really seen anybody personally run this specific play out of it. Here, playmaker left, get the halfback out there get a block, and this QB power is devastating. Think about Julian Edelman, Antonio Brown, Walter Payton, out of position, halfback quarterback combo. I tell you what, man, this is something I'll be taking online and testing and seeing if people can stop this. I think this would make opponents rage quit uh, because if you say they break a big one to the right on the first drive of the game, and then on the second drive, all of a sudden they motion it left. You're like, man, now i got to stop it left. Ugh. And then it's third and two, and they just take it right up the middle. Even against run commit, I think you might have some success going up the middle because of your motions and the blocking and the pulling stuff. Like, And then all of a sudden they got this quick audible, which is vertical. So you got a tight end corner. You, gotta, you put the halfback on an option. You can still motion the halfback to fool them. And then you got verticals deep. Man. I tell you what, like, that is going to be a tough scheme to slow down. You know I love Gun Trip's tight end, and the Browns playbook has it, and it's kind of my third formation I use aside from gun doubles and gun split close. But this makes me feel like I would run it more. I would look for deep balls. I'd look for this quarterback power. Um, still don't have the best quick audibles because of the run, but you also you have um, I'll show you the quick pass in a second here. But this would probably be one of my main setups. I might use I had the halfback underneath right there against man. I think that was so. You've got some passes you could mix in. I think verticals has to be your bread and butter if you want to make this a successful formation. I would also drag the tight end quite a bit from time to time. And then the last thing I saw was a streak to the halfback. Problem did this a lot during the Madden Challenge. I've done it. I did it a ton in Madden 25. Um, I've done it three times this year, I think. And every time it's gotten me like eight yards on like a fourth and six. I catch it in stride at about five yards, and then I automatically get the next four yards. So right here you see that right edge is open. We get the block from our... A halfback and we pick up a big gain on QB power so you're forcing them a line to a line to the left a line to the right you've got the playmaker you've got motions you've got uh, you want to get a really fast guard that pulls that's the one caveat to this scheme is if the guard doesn't get over and pull I think it's gonna even like make the linebacker try and shoot in so he's got to get around to seal the edge and then if they blitz heavy this quick audible huge so look at that flat route that's a very very unique flat route i run this in the red zone and as long as it's not man you're gonna have pretty good luck on targeting the flat especially if they blitz from the left of the screen to try and stop qb power so that is a little formation breakdown of the carolina panthers playbook that is gun trips tight end that's qb power run scheme get yourself a walter payton out of position Tweet me uh, your stats with Walter Payton after. I think you guys are going to be able to rack up and frustrate opponents with that. They have a gun bunch, which has, uh, I believe it had Z-Spot, so you're all set. You got, you know, a little bit of everything right there. Gun normal has y sale, which is good. But it doesn't really have um, the run plays you might want, so that's the other beef with with this doesn't have an inside zone i don't think it's got read option but we don't like read option as much as we like inside zone even tech even though technically it should be better because it should just be an inside zone but then you could also run with the quarterback but the game doesn't really work like that in my opinion and we've gone over why it's because they can uh clamp down on the halfback with just one button press and force you to take the quarterback um they've got a deep ball play 
Of course, Gun Tray Y Flex. This is not Gun Tray Y Flex tight, but it's very, very similar. They got PA crossers. You could live in this formation too. And that's the one thing I like about Carolina is this formation does have the inside zone. So if you did want to come out in a playbook uh, in a formation where you had inside zone quick audible, you've got the PA crossers, which is very, very tough. You've got uh, this play where you could look to Olsen across the middle rather than a corner because everyone's going to think corner when they see this formation. So the fact that you could throw to Olsen across the middle right there is going to fool some users, I think, because the route does start out like it's going to be a corner. You've got a wheel to the halfback. We'd have to you know, learn the best timing. Do we motion them out? Do we not motion them out? Um, is this setup right here going to be cover two or cover three, like if we hit triangle? Yes. So you want to learn that setup to beat cover two. You've got, once again, you got inside zone. You've got um, the quick out on the right on PA crossers. I would cancel the halfback uh, setup. So if I'm running this Carolina Panthers, I get it in draft draft champions. I'm getting a mobile quarterback. I'm running QB power from gun trip side end. I'm running uh, this formation inside zone. I think you're going to have a lot of success with it. You've got to just be aware of the quick audibles. And then I'm going to run gut ace twins posts and uh, mix in there. So those are the three things. Those are my three best formations in this Panthers offensive playbook. On twim 176, Z Farrell's here. Chat is live. Chat is hype. Just taped this bad boy about two hours ago. And um, glad everybody's able to make it out. Really appreciate you guys stopping by, especially during the holidays. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Madden Miss. All right, gun wide trips open last formation. You try and hit this PA wide receiver in deep. Everybody knows. I think you just streak the tight end. Wait, throw it to circle deep across the left middle of the field. Slip screens in there. Anytime you're in a playbook you don't know, you can come out in the slip screen. It's good probably once a game. The earlier you do it, the more your opponent's going to be spooked out about it. Uh, DRC sticks with Ted Ginn here, um, but if you want a one-on-one -on -one throw like we did get right there with Greg Olson, I called this play from, I was in the Cowboys playbook, and I called this exact play with this exact setup. All I did was streak the tight end. I think it's a different formation, and it worked exactly like it works against me online all the time. I was hitting touchdowns. Now, I don't know if the alignment's slightly different or the CPU's just not reacting the same way. Or the circle route's a little shorter in the Cowboys one, but I've never gotten this to work like it should. That always happens to me, whereas the, the CPU always hit, or uh, the players always hit TDs against me. But that Cowboys one specifically that looks exactly like this formation is the one that works. So if you ever really want to know what that is, go there, try that. Um, and then watch Sirius Mo in the game of the week against Gibbs because he hit it a couple times for a score. But you got the screen right here, and. Screens are always good, man. They're always good. Pain in the neck. Just a total pain in the neck. So don't sleep on screen passes. All right, everybody. It is time for the game of the week. We have double games of the week tonight. One of the better games of the week from this entire year. If you could do me a favor and follow the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, this is a, good, a great episode of TWIM. I appreciate everybody that's here. And uh, follows on the channel really do help the show. So if you could just hit that heart button real quick for us. I know most of you guys already follow. But anybody new, give us that follow. Now I brought my PS4 home instead of my Xbox. So I don't have a mutt team. <clears throat> so it's Draft Champions. Tory Holt as my legend. Deshaun Jackson as my flashback. I picked up two halfbacks with Randall and Crowell. And I got Eddie Royal in the slot. Matty Ice is a very good quarterback. And then I've got two really good uh, tackles on the left side of the line. So good for inside zone. Defensively, though, very, very bad. Olivier Vernon on the defensive line, who is good in draft champs, not great in mutt. Very, very solid, though. No corners, no safeties. And Brandon Marshall and D'Amico Ryans in the middle. I want to say Gibbs drafted this team on last week's twin with Mo. And now I'm stuck with it. So this is just a Draft Champs game. Just a random competitive game. 
our next game will be even better because we're playing a friend in Draft Champs, so you'll get to see that. But there was nobody online, so I just had to take on some random Joe right here and just mash him real quick. So we'll get into that. You'll see the lineup in action here on the game of the week. All right, so I have uh, the Patriots defensive playbook, so I had no idea what playbook I had. As soon as I got into this playbook and I saw 3-4 and 4-3, I was like, wow, I have Patriots. That's awesome. When you don't have a defense, what do you do? Do you gas people up? Do you, like, what's the plan when you don't, when you have three drafted players on the defensive side of the ball? He's got Eric Dickerson, a halfback. He's got Alshon Jeffrey in the slot left. He's uh, just kind of thrown over the middle. It's hard to tell if this guy's good or bad. I mean, he's definitely bad, but it's hard to tell early in this game because, you know, he knows that I know that that's an effective formation, and he knows that's an effective formation. So he's already, like, smart there. The hurry up is the mark of a really good player or a really bad player. Earlier in Madden, it was a good a good thing, like three years ago. If you ran hurry up offense, I mean, you knew what was up. This guy, I haven't seen really much hurry up this year. Right there, that's a great route. That's a great route. We saw that route in the tournament, the Madden Challenge, which you guys supported big uh, last Friday. So I, I, right here, I'm like, man, maybe I got a game. And then I uh, switched to man coverage, which you're going to get Jeffrey on a linebacker, who's probably not even a good linebacker. You're going to get a safety in Rambo, who is not Team of the Week Rambo. So if I'm playing with Ed Reed, Ed Reed breaks on that ball with play rec when it's thrown. He probably picks that pass off. But this is draft champs, and Rambo can't break down on the ball. We uh, also misses the tackle immediately after not breaking down on the ball. So now we're down 7 nothing, and I'm like, this guy's not good, right? He, kn he knows the formation. I have no defenders. I'm like, I need... I need a big return. I need Deshaun Jackson flashback to step up big for me. We hit him with the juke. We get around the edge, and we take it over midfield. So that's what you need. This offense, I'm also in the Patriots offensive playbook, so I can't not score every single drive against this guy. Like, I have no choice. Um, and all of a sudden, I can't find Deshaun Jackson. APB on Deshaun Jackson. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? You, you're tired from your kick return because now Eddie Royal is in the drag position <clears throat> and now I'm, I'm lost I'm lost as to where my team went but we're going to have to make some plays we don't streak Torrey Holt on the left we do hit Eddie Royal <clears throat> it's cover 2, it's a flat that's our first bad read of the day it's, it's cover 3 but we didn't have anybody to take the flat deep which would have been Torrey Holt on the streak Patriots playbook here this week in Madden 176 just taped this show a couple hours ago fresh 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 for you we're not live because I'm home for the holidays but this is just as good in my opinion uh, we were able to get a really good game of the week in for you which is coming up next Tyler Eifert wide open to the corner that's too easy that's how I knew I mean I guess you get one free halfback wheel a game like but if they can't stop it, that's how you know somebody's not good. Because they should know that that's coming when I'm in this formation. Like, they should definitely realize. Here we finally get the right setup in. Uh, the, R, the R1 halfback was going to get open maybe on his cut. But we take the smart drag underneath against two man under. And now we got a second and four. We're down seven after, you know, an okay attack by our opponent. Table route, touchdown. And that's the table route against the flat swing route in the Carolina book. Like, that's the difference. Why does it matter? Well, that's exactly why it matters. Because that was a 15-yard touchdown for free where <clears throat> you just throw the little swing, you're getting five yards and probably hit pretty hard. So we tie the game up 7-7. Seven, seven, and now we're going to try and keep ramping up the pressure. We don't have any defenders on our team. Our team only has D'Amico Ryans, Olivier Vernon, and Brandon Marshall, like 80, linebacker. So 
The good news is, though, we do have Vic Beasley, we do have Vernon, and we do have um, Keith Rivers, not terrible. Trey Waynes, uh, <clears throat> pretty good, like, base silver man corner. Like, you'll take him on your team. Victor Butler, D'Amico Ryans. He has Julius Peppers and Eric Dickerson. Uh, he had his beat on the drag there, but he tried to roll out. Now I'm starting to think, all right, this guy's not that good. If he's going to roll out like that, he's not that good. I go back and forth on my opponents. Uh, we're trying to set up inside zone defense just to be safe, and we're going to use her to the left side of the screen, but we really can't let Brandon Cooks, who's on the left side, go deep. And he doesn't. He cuts back across the middle. We release the spy, and he throws that into double coverage. And uh, Matt Castle's now 5 for 5. That one hurt me a bit because I felt like we did the right thing with double coverage, but that's Alshon Jeffrey. He's the best in the game, and I have two silvers who didn't make a play, and I can't expect them to make a play. That's why I want to have two there instead of one. If that was one-on-one, -on -one, I'm okay. Two, I'm like, all right, he's not going to get that all the time. Um, hopefully he throws that again into double coverage, <clears throat> and I can make a play on it. So there we get the stop. We're trying to get back to stop the four verticals deep. He throws it again out of bounds. So if you consider aggressive catch OP, you have to consider that overthrow right there while he's rolling a part of aggressive catch that's not caught because he wanted to aggressive catch there. But he didn't get the chance, so that's a win for the defense against an aggressive catch because the throw went out of bounds. Factored in, all factored in, I'm just going to throw it on 4th and 20. Well, that's something that can happen. That's a result. Here we press. Uh, I, I, I thought that was going to be corner strike because of the way he was there, but Trey Waynes picks it off underneath. He sits on it. It was a curl. The tail at the start of the route told me corner strike, so I took my user there, but Trey Wayne just made the play for us. We called him out as a silver that you want, and that was a huge play uh, right there for our defense because our defense is not very good, and our offense is going to score us a lot of points in this game. So that, that makes it easy because we're going to score every time we get the ball. We have two backs, Torrey Holt, the flashback to Sean, two linemen uh, Matt Ryan like we're gonna we're gonna rack up the point so for us to be able to get a defensive uh, pick six puts us in commanding position plus we're in a playbook we're comfortable with and uh, we're not going to lose this game 14 7 right now <clears throat> he comes out we got to figure out how to align against this we do a bad job setting up inside zone defense uh, you want to get the linebacker from the left to bring him to the right, not from the right to the left. Here we do it correctly, but now he flipped it, so now we're still incorrect. And uh, thankfully he goes to the PA. He tries to escape, <clears throat> but contains just too much. And if you're a player out there and you haven't, <clears throat> haven't figured out when they're going to contain and when they're not going to contain, then you're making a mistake. Like That's the number one thing when you drop back. People say, like, well, what do you look for when you drop back? Are you looking at your receiver? Are you looking at blitzers? Are you looking at your routes? At some point when you drop back, you have to look <clears throat> and see if you can escape the pocket. If they're containing, like right there, that's so obvious <clears throat> to me. Like don't run outside the pocket right there because they're going to shed instantly. But um, like this guy's ran into three sacks. We haven't set up any pressure. Um so and there's your double coverage aggressive catch that doesn't get caught so that's now 0 for, 1 for 3 on aggressives and we'll take that all day on 3rd and 22 we want to gas him up because we don't want to let him throw downfield we don't want to give him the time to throw downfield so um, he's got 72 in at tight end he goes 1 on 1 downfield and we make an extremely lucky 1 on 1 play so that's one where if you're that guy, you're like, man, I threw against Dennard in zone coverage one-on-one, -on -one, and I didn't make the play. Dang. And when he threw that, I was like, uh-oh. But a huge play right there. Fourth and 22, we know the fake punt's coming. We're 100% sure it's going to be a fake punt. And, of course, it's a fake punt. He doesn't have punter Tom Brady. So, boom, we're good. We let the ball fall to the ground, and we take over, and we get the pause which always leads to the rage quit that's the first game of the week guys we have a second game of the week coming up here on this week in madden show 176 that you are gonna love so let's take a look at the draft for that 
All right, draft champs, play a friend. We reset our draft, and we get New England. <clears throat> We're definitely going to take New England. Jets has a good offense. That's uh, a spread with inside zone. Seattle's pretty good. That's a problem used in the first tournament. But New England is our most comfortable defense and offense. First selection, Mike Adams. I think he's a little too slow. Dunlap. 93 finesse moves good, but he's so weak that can't really take him. You know I'm a Mike DeVito guy. I'm Mike DeVito till I die. Tremendous strength, tremendous block shed. He's the guy I'm going to take because if I can't stop the run, I'm in trouble. And DeVito is going to really help me with that. Plus, he can go to D-tackle. So I'm a big fan of that. Now, right here, I need in the Patriots offense a tight end who can route run. So when I see Richard Rodgers... And that's his road to the playoffs, not even his team of the week. I think I thought this was his team of the week. He doesn't have good route running. So, like, I really can't take Richard Rodgers. But Jarvis Landry, I can't take either. De La Puente, I can't take. And so now I'm just sitting here like, I guess I have to take Richard Rodgers. But that means I'm still going to have to take another tight end who can run routes or put a receiver there. And then I get Kelsey. He can't run routes. So I take Muhort. <clears throat> For his strength and run block combo at left guard and because um, that's my attack point on inside zone is left guard so I need to be strong there so I actually don't mind that pick uh, Robert Ayers has 94 power move and 90 excel so his new team of the week I think has 96 92 like we said same as Clay Matthews but I need to take Raheem Moore I just played a game without free safety and I don't want to do that again right here Cordy Glenn is my guy uh, as a base, as far as the base talent goes, and I continue that left side of line, but I take Alshon Jeffrey, and I'm going to move him to tight end one. This is a, a tremendous round, super tough round. Give me a one for Charles. Give me a two for David Johnson. Give me a three for Ted Ginn. I took a picture of this because I, I was like, ah, ah. I'm leaning David Johnson. Ted Ginn could be fun because he could be the deep threat. But I need two halfbacks in this Pat scheme, so I want to get started with David Johnson. Plus, he has 95 speed, which is what Ted Ginn has. If Johnson had like 90, I'd probably take Ginn. So Eddie Royal right here, we still don't have a receiver because we're moving Jeffrey to tight end. So, you know, we're not going to take a fullback. Probably not going to take a left tackle, even though he's strong. Uh, we're going to take Royal and hope he can come up big for us, also run some drags. All right, we don't have – we can't take Cam Newton at this point. Just not interested. So we take Quinn. We already have a free safety, but when now we have, you know, a free safety and a strong safety. Right here, we want Patrick Peterson, but we want him for CB. I'd love to get Aloka here, but I want Pryor's hit power, and he's got 84 zone, pretty good speed. That's where I got to lean towards. But now I'm, I got three safeties. Probably should have taken a Loka, looking back on everything. But I wanted that hit power. So I do grab another safety here. Now I got three free safeties. And now I'm thinking, all right, it's going to be zone coverage across the board here. All right, you heard me talk about it. Walter Payton, we're testing him out today in Draft Champs. If you missed Twim earlier, go back on YouTube watch our Carolina Panthers QB power trips tight end scheme and Walter Payton out of position is going to be the guy for that here Julius Thomas would have been the perfect tight end to get instead of Richard Rodgers because of his route running but we didn't and now we got to take a second halfback because the formation we want to run uses two halfbacks can't take Ladarius Green because we already got two tight ends uh, can't take Mathis too slow I think even though he'd be decent off that edge to if we're going to blitz him. But uh, Demarcus Lawrence, hopefully he can pay dividends. we got DeVito and Lawrence. They should help stop the run and hopefully get after the passer. Right here, I've already got two halfbacks, so I can't take another halfback, even though we get the MJD, who we'd probably go with here. Slightly, slight edge over the belt, maybe. We go Pierre Garçon, and now we have... Three receivers, but Jeffrey's going to go to tight end. So We're, we got an extra skill position player, which means our defense is hurting. 
We go with Perfect here for the hit power, and we don't have any linebackers yet, so we need him across the middle, and we're not looking too bad. We need to go defense. We can't take another halfback. Can't take a right guard. Legend. Just no thanks. And Reggie White's brand new. He's 98 overall. He's pretty nasty. We take him. We've got... We can always move Demarcus Lawrence out. We've got three D linemen. We're going to be able to stop the run. we got three safeties. we got one linebacker. We can make that defense work with the Pats book. And let's get into game here. What we do is we play a friend. So I didn't have any friends online. I was hoping to maybe hit up like Tweezy or somebody who was home for the holidays also. And play a game of PS4 against them. So what I did was I just checked my lineup. And then I went online and was like, who can play against me? And I have a lot of friends on PlayStation and a lot of people, but I had to clear them off because like a while ago, if you had a hundred friends or more on PlayStation, your friends list lagged. So like when you scrolled down your friends list, you couldn't, it would never like load. So I had to like get rid of some people and then... So I don't know who's on my friends list. There's the two people here. I don't know who they are, but they were the only people online. So I hit them up. I was like, hey, does anybody want a game? I just want to play somebody. I need to bring the TWIM fans, their action, TWIM 176. They don't care how they get it. They don't care. They just want some Madden action as we set our lineup here. They're following the channel. They're my dudes. I got to make this happen. So I just hit up uh, this guy for a game here as we load in our lineup. You'll see we got perfect. They move Raheem Moore. And then this guy, Burley, 73 CB. He's actually really good at CB for a silver. You got um, Quinn, Pryor, Burley, and Moore. I'm thinking cover four. So I'm thinking a lot of cover four. All right, so draft champs play a friend. <clears throat> only, re only real issue here, you got to actually have friends. We invite Doom Time, the only guy online. He can't play. We go down one more spot. We find Joel. Joel's like, yo, I can play. He said, first he said, did you send this to the wrong person? And then I said, no, I need, I need some ad in action. So Joel was game. He had no idea why we invited him. I think he streams himself, uh, so you can check out his channel if you like his gameplay style after this game, but pretty cool of Joel just to jump in, no strings attached, not sure when he got on my friends list, but it's cool to have people in the community that are just willing to play games, and uh, people always ask, hey, Farles, can we play, and you never know when you might get your opportunity, so shout out to Joel for uh, playing. From here on, we'll just focus on the game. And I'll just treat Joel like I'm just playing some online random who frustrates the heck out of me. So Eddie Royal on the kick return. And he jukes to the outside left but can't break the tackle. And right here, I don't know anything about Joel. And I see that he tried to f uh, strip the ball right there. And I'm like, okay, this guy might know what he's doing. Sometimes people that are on my friends list, they're like really beginners. And they're just looking for like quick tips. So I'm like, maybe I'm going to blow this guy out. But then I see he brings the safety down in the box. Probably knows I want to run inside zone. I got QB Walter Payton. And I see that pressure come in off the left edge. And I'm like, okay, DB Sting 2. That's a pretty, that you don't call DB Sting 2 by accident. And so now I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to throw the ball against this cover, too. See how his CBs are? He must have base aligned because his CBs are lined up outside Eddie Royal, like, slightly. <clears throat> and so I think, all right, maybe I can throw. But I got quarterback Walter Payton, and I'm not – and I'm in gun ace. Like, why did I – Why? and then I get a bad throw from QB Walter Payton, which I absolutely should get bad throws. I'm like, why am I in gun ace? Oh, because I have two tight ends. So I was in gun ace because I have two tight ends. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to mix it up here on the game of the week. Like, I, you guys have all seen me run gun split close, Pats and Browns. And on third and ten, we look to make our first first down of the game. We try a little setup. We hit uh, the table route. 
And Alfred Blue cuts it up and picks up, I think, eight yards before he gets popped. So now we got a fourth and three. And I'm like, all right, I think this Joel guy's actually kind of good. I'm going to go for it on my own 26 on fourth and three. Because this is draft champions. And this is this week at Madden Show 176. And I got to get a first down on my opening drive. I know I probably can't run the ball because he's got dudes just packing the box. Packing the box. So I think I'm probably going to try and look for the drag or the option route. Nothing's open. Nothing's open. I playmaker. He's usering. And I just go deep to Garcon. I go deep one-on-one -on -one downfield. Pierre Garcon makes an incredible catch on his defender. And I was pretty pumped. I felt like Joel's probably pretty mad at me right now. But I couldn't throw it over the middle. I, I was resigned right there to taking a shot downfield. That's Tim Jennings against Pierre Garcon road to the playoffs like I had no choice I could have thrown it earlier but um now I get into gun doubles I go to the inside zone now that I'm in the red zone but he's got guys set up off that left edge I should have taken that back into the middle I did a bad job uh, running the ball right there oh man so I dodged a super big bullet on my first fourth down attempt and I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, second and ten. We now have Campanaro in the slot, which we don't really want. Um, when we run this formation, we have just uh, could not have been more open to the flat. Yes, chat. I understand the flat was open. The corner was kind of open too, but we got a bad throw from QB Walter Payton, which we're gonna get in this game. Um, he he's gonna make some good throws. He's gonna make some bad throws. Spoiler. Who knows? Uh, third and 10, we're inside the 19-yard line. We go back to the gun split close, and we realize, all right, we've got to make a throw here. We're looking across the middle, and we have Jeffrey. And I think that could have been a completion, but I don't, I don't think it was a super inaccurate, but I think it was just a regular inaccurate, and he had to, like, extend for it and couldn't make the play. So we take our three, especially since we got lucky on fourth and three, and... You know, that's not a bad opening drive. I'm not sure what Joel has on offense, and it's also a draft champion. So Joel might have a good D, but maybe he didn't get the draft he wanted on offense. I'm not sure what he drafted. So i got to kind of figure that out as we go here. So it's first and 10, and we're in the Patriots' defensive playbook. So we're in the big dime 146. We have three really good defensive linemen. We got one linebacker, and so... We also have safeties, no corners. We have three safeties, and then we have Burley. So we're going to play with, like, four corners, and we're going to try and play zone coverage. Here's cover three, first play of the game. And he's in five wide. Playmakers up the middle, playmakers up the middle. And Calvin Pryor comes out of nowhere. Guy we drafted picks off the pass uh, from cover three drop. Not a play we usually call. We wanted to find cover four, but we didn't have time. And... He gets in there and makes a great interception for us. Rips the ball out. That's huge. That's a one-on-one -on -one aggressive in our favor. So we've now got two of those in our favor. Um, we got the one on fourth down, and then we got that one right there. So that was that makes me feel good. But I'm still like, I can't run inside zone. He's doing a great job like slowing it down. We try and cut back to the right. And it's not there. So I'm kind, I'm not I'm not nervous, but I'm like, I'm gonna have to take the top off of his defense if he's gonna call cover two I've got to make him pay I'm in a book where I have plays to beat every concept so I go to the well I get my cover two beater right here I get time in the pocket and I see that triangles coming open I know I got the protection I set my feet quarterback Walter Payton and I throw what I consider to be a DOT to Richard Rogers 10 nothing feeling really good about this one um I know scoring's going to be – I know I can move the ball, but I know it's going to be a challenge. I know it's going to be a challenge. Like the last game, that guy had no chance to stop me. This game, he at least knows what to do, and it's going to be tough. But I used that one play right there for a big score after the turnover. But now I've only seen him run one play on offense, and it was five wide. So I know I'm going to have to come out in that big dime again. And – 
because he went five wide. So I'm trying to still get my subs in. I want to get perfect in the game for his hip power. I want to make sure my uh, CBs and my safeties are all like in the right situations. I want to get Quinn right at the strong safety position, not up in the box. And so I want to call cover four, but we can't find it again in time. So now we call cover three again. And he goes five wide, four verts, and he playmakers, 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 and good job right there to, f to make, rather than sending him on a streak, he was able to get him to go left, which my user has to back off, and he's able to complete a big pass. I'm looking to contain, contain, and um, I know we can't run the ball, and right there, so right there, if you're Joel, that's a, that's a, uh, a hitch in the slot, and I instantly know Joel's legit. Boom. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, good. This isn't good. He, if he knows to call that route, then I'm in trouble. And right here, I should have uh, sent the spy, but I, he was playmaker, and so I had to go to the right side of the screen with my user and like pay attention to that side of the TV. I'm playing on a much bigger TV than I'm normally used to, and I, I lost track of sending the spy. So that's on me, and that's a good play by him stressing me with uh, playmaker. I finally find cover four now that the first quarter is almost over, and that's just bad play calling by me on defense. He's playmakers, 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 and the sack comes in. So I backed up enough there. Reggie White, 98 overall, busting in for a sack, and now it's second and 16. He's going to come out in the five wide. Again, I am I know he has Doriel Green Beckham. I know he has Julius Peppers. I know he has Matt Ryan, and I know he has... Uh, he's got an elite center, obviously. Uh, Woods and Sammy Watkins. So he, he did draft nice for his scheme. And right here, he playmakers, playmakers, playmakers. Goes out of bounds. And it's third and 16 coming up. Now, we can stay in big dime here, cover four. But he goes down to two receivers, two tight ends, one running back. That's the first time he changed his personnel. And now i got to get in the 3-3-5 odd. And hopefully be able to make a play so i'm gonna come out i don't even get the defense i want i think i should take a timeout i do i do take a timeout because it's third and 16 i don't have the i didn't if you don't call the blitz play properly you can't get to it so you're stuck in a crappy defense and i want to get reggie white in the game i want to get demarcus lawrence i want to get mike devito I want to make sure my zone cover guys are my best guys, all my safeties that I drafted out there. If you get three, four safeties, he runs the ball, and we are able to stop it. So that's good. Um, tries. I think he was just trying to get yards to make it a more manageable fourth down. But it's still fourth and 14. He's going to go for it. We don't really get – we get kind of clicked on. Um, we sent the spy late, and we are able to get the ball back. So – we could have sent the spy a little earlier right there. But if you don't get CBs, what you can do is get safeties with zone coverage and then put them at two outside CBs, two safeties, and play cover four. And then if you got safeties with 90 zone coverage, that's very good. Um, and just kind of chill in zones. That way if they get in one-on-one -on -one matchups, you're okay. So we go inside zone right here, and that should have been... 10 yards instead of 5 yards. We got caught up on our blocker. We're in gun ace again for some reason. Like, this is where I do need an S. Gibbs to just kind of slap me and be like, why are you in gun ace? Yeah, you drafted two tight ends, so you're going to run gun ace. I didn't even draft two tight ends. I have Alshon Jeffrey. And now I got Rodgers in the slot on a drag, which is horrible. Like, this is the worst play, like, personnel imaginable and right there nobody gets open um they all switched off i couldn't do anything now it's third and five and i'm gonna need to go to a play guys this is this week in madden show 176 z farrell's draft champions game of the week follow the channel we're having fun here on this holiday edition go back watch for the christmas carolina offense scheme qb power walter payton and have fun with that. Here we motion late, and we run inside zone, and Johnson shoots through. I dove, and he made it all the way through. I wonder if I had stayed up, if I could have cribbed that with uh, new team of the week, David Johnson, right there, who we like, 95 speed on that. 
We're going to stay in the gun doubles. We see the clock is ticking down. We're up 10 nothing. We got control of the game. And uh, this is big for us. We're, we're taking on an opponent. We, we've never seen him play, but we realize pretty quickly, all right, this guy is, definitely knows what he's doing. And Johnson hits the left edge. We can't get the block to make it all the way, but we do get eight yards and make it a super manageable second and two. Gun doubles. Whew. Clock ticking down. We started the chew clock because we don't want to give him the ball back. He gets it at half. So we want to make sure we're up, you know, if we're only up 13, that he doesn't have time for a drive. Or if we're up 17, that he doesn't have time for a drive. We can maybe put this one away in the first quarter. Uh, that would make it too easy, though. Second and two, we go to the gun doubles. We're trying to use this motion guy to screw stuff up. R1 is wide open. We hit it, and, oh, we get down to the four-yard line. Man, I thought we were going to go all the way right there. Our blocker just didn't hold up at receiver, but that's a huge play for us against a cover zero uh, blitz and we're looking really really good chewing the clock right here with a minute 30 left in the first half 10 nothing lead draft champions eddie royal pierre garçon david johnson and joel says i've seen this play before we're not letting you have it and he takes time out so right there i tried to call hurry up offense so that he would forget to call a timeout. Sometimes when your opponent calls hurry up, you're like, all right, I don't need to call a timeout because they're just going to hike it right away. And then what you do is you get to the line of scrimmage and you just sit there making adjustments, looking like you're going to do stuff. And then with about 12 seconds left on the play clock, they're like, oh, I just got had. So I was trying to, but Joel didn't fall for it, the, that, that old trick. Um, right here, we want to call a quick toss, but it's not going to be there. So what we do is we want to roll out with Walter Payton and so we call the PA, and I'm like, I got Walter Payton. Let's roll out. Let's roll out. And we do, but we, we don't really get ah, the speed. So we get down to the inch line. This actually works out well because it makes him burn his last time out, and we're just going to QB sneak for the score, go up 17. He's not going to have much of a drive. This one's looking like it's over. Pretty simple right here, especially with Walter Payton on the QB sneak. We got stuff. That's not a big deal, though. Um, we'll just sneak again and grab it. He's got no timeouts left, so this is this is perfect for us. We got Walter Payton, who's maybe one of the greatest running – I mean, not maybe. He is, he is one of the greatest running backs of all time. He's playing quarterback. He's running QB sneak, which is one of the best plays in the game. And we get the – instead of going up 17 nothing, Joel shuts down our sneak twice – but whatever, what we'll do here is we'll just get a sack for a safety, and he's got no time left, so no timeouts. We're good. There's no way he scores. Maybe he gets three, but he doesn't get a touchdown here, so 10 nothing instead of 17 nothing. We have this game in complete control. Joel goes underneath, gets out of the shadow of his own end zone. He goes to the old gun split close. Great formation. All right, we call press man-to-man -man against uh, Joel's set here. He motions the guy and gets him off press. So that instantly also tells me Joel's, Joel knows what he's doing. If you call, so he's in the Cardinals playbook. If you call one of those quick out routes and it gets pressed, it's not going to work. But by motioning it, you get him off the press, and it's free yards. It gets him out of bounds. It keeps him you know, out of the shadow of his own end zone. And so, smart call by Joel there. And he goes back to gun split close. We're in zone coverage. And we want to play a little bit deeper here. We don't really press against man. And Joel goes right up the seam to Peppers. And I like that call right there. That's a nice play against this. But the clock's ticking. There's only 35 seconds left. And he's, you know, looking for a play. But we're like, all right, whatever. You know, maybe possibly could get a field goal. Possibly. Not looking good, though, for Joel. Goes across the middle. Five wide playmakers, playmakers, playmakers. Oh, and we back up with it. Quinn can't break down the ball. And now I'm like, all right, Joel's in field goal range. This is bad. Seven, But 17 seconds left. Clock's ticking down. We sack him here. It runs out on him. 
whatever. No big deal. 10 nothing Should be 17. I'm not going to let this guy back in the game. I'm not going to let this guy back in the game. Six seconds. Half's over. 101 coverage. No big deal. I drafted all those safeties. Ass! Back caught on right there by Silver. Doriel Green Beckham. Can't leave him one-on-one. -on -one. One second left in the half. Joel breaks my heart. Gets back in the game. He gets ball at half. All of a sudden, I'm looking at a 14-10 game when I just should have been up 17-0. Oh, Eddie Royal. All I need is for you to fumble this kick. And we're in deep trouble. One second. Joel kicks deep. Eddie Royal comes out of the end zone at the 20. Cuts, breaks left, and gets a lane. Gets a tackle, but he gets wrapped up by the kicker. No, he breaks the tackle to the edge. Eddie Royal could go all the way crib shot one second left eddie royal touchdown 17 7 man that would have been way easier to just sneak it in and then not give up a touchdown but 17 7 before i have to kick the ball back to joel is huge that was the play that made me feel so good right there i was getting real nervous uh, having to kick back the ball. <sighs> what a play by Eddie Royal. That's a Kobe moment. Hold those Kobe's up in the chat. 17-7, Joel comes back. Spin moves, and we're able to take him down at the 30-yard line. All right, so we know he wants to go five wide offense. And I feel like we did a good job usering, keeping him in the pocket. But we're going to have to get a user pick at some point to just end this game. And we're going to try and put pressure on him because the longer he has the playmaker, uh, the more he's going to be able to beat us downfield. So he's going for the big play. And we're hoping that, like right there you saw, oh, uh, the pressure came in, forced him left. We did the whole routine. <laughs> it's, it's clockwork. But he's able to get the ball out, so that doesn't actually help us. On 2nd and 10, we stick in the 3-3-5 odd pressure. This is in the brain trust for anybody that doesn't have this pressure. And he does really the only way you can beat it. Throw quick to the right flat. Obviously, we use her a flat zone on that side of the screen. So we've got to make a play. But we drifted away because we don't want to get beat over the middle. But we just got to get back there and tackle. Um, we're doing okay getting set up. It does a pretty good job stopping the runner, at least slowing it down. He has Curtis Martin, and we have good um, linemen, so we're not really that worried about the run. We're worried about plays like verticals. Uh, sent the spy slightly late right there, but he forced the throw away. It's now a third and seven, and now we're going to go to big dime. You know, I considered staying in the 3-3-5 three, three, odd here, but we're going to uh, switch it up to the two-man, and... Gun split close. We call press. Our defense feel pretty good about the setup. But right here, I like that he motioned this guy across. Kind of screwed everything up. I did put a flat out there, though. Um, great patience by my opponent right here. We try and send the spy. And you're just not going to be able to defend playmakers for that long with silver, CBs, and man coverage. And safeties. Like, there's no way... It's going to work, especially when he has Curtis Martin, who's pretty good at halfback. A legend. You might have heard of him. So we go back to the 3-3-5 odd here. Because when you get beat by Playmaker, you're like, all right, I'm not going to let this guy beat me by Playmakering. And <clears throat> right there, he Playmakered, but he didn't have the time because the pressure was coming in on him. He had to get rid of the ball. So that's that's the name of the game, pressure or coverage. And I just had enough of getting playmaker, which is a testament to my opponent. So we try and scoot in. We're able to stop the run here. And now it's a third and nine situation. We go to the man-to-man -man, uh, coverage, but we don't. nobody gets like lined up in time. And the corner route to the tight end gets broken up. Thankfully, we make the play on that ball. Uh, that's the smash play. That's a play we broke down earlier. He's going to go for it on fourth and nine. It's tough with your, to know your kicker's range in this mode because none of them are very good. So 4th and 9, we go with the cover 4, and we drop purples. 
Uh, so I actually kind of like this coverage. We shade underneath. We triangle right stick down to shade underneath. But we get uh, our camera gets jacked up. And that's just a, a tough route. But he, he uh, possession catches it on the sideline. But he comes up short. So it's our ball. So that was a big stop right there. That's exactly why I put the purple out there instead of the flat. Um, he still got to the sideline. But we're able to take back control of the game at 17-7. This one should be over. We're going to uh, run inside zone, just try and get the clock down as low as possible. But he is doing a good job here against the run. This is the uh, cover zero blitz. We're in gun ace. As we talked about earlier, not really sure why, aside from the fact that we just we have two tight ends and we want extra blocking on inside zone. The Patriots have inside zone and gun doubles and gun ace. That's really it. Here we call the sail play and we call it to the left from left to right instead of right to left and we look across the middle and we go to the drag underneath the corner route was about to get wide open but we uh, couldn't wait and now on third and eight we go to the split close pats which is our bread and butter but for some reason i was like i can't throw a halfback wheel that i i was like my opponent will know it's coming even though we've never played I don't know. I I should have probably tried to go there. Uh, here we playmaker circle. We throw downfield to Alshon, and all his defenders did a good job drifting back right there. I thought if I threw that with a touch pass, which is double tap, um, we could make it over the top. Looking back on this, I didn't realize I got a stop there on in the second half. I need to do a way better job with that drive right there. Like the fact that I turned it right back over is is bad. I needed to run the ball. All right, just be just just be better. Uh, we send the spy here a little bit late. He does good playmaker. We get a big hit with McLean, but he hangs on to the ball. It makes it second in inches, carving us up with that playmaker. Uh, we've gotten one pick on a playmaker, but we've given up a couple big plays, and we've gotten two fourth down stops. So you feel good about that, but. Here against this formation, we try and bring the CB in off the edge. He picks up the first down with Curtis Martin. And all of a sudden, even though we just got that stop, he's still he's already in field goal range to make it a one-score game with not a lot of time uh, off the clock since we last touched the ball. Right there, uh, Burley makes a nice play one-on-one -on -one in zone coverage, and that's kind of what you want to do. I think he's up in the 80s. Uh, for zone coverage so that was a good time for our cover four mix up we want to bring the pressure here we don't want to get playmaker on second and ten we get a purple out on the left side of the screen we got our spy to send uh, he um, gets the guy in motion to the right we're worried about that send the spy send the spy send the spy oh, that hurt right there that's when you're on a D line and you don't have the agility to use her uh, we expect to run right here I think we blitz everybody there's just no way you don't run right there. Like, I blitzed everybody because that's what everybody does. I, I felt it in my I felt it in my soul. Uh, here, we drop the deep zones into purples. We shade underneath. Oh, and we almost get a pick out of cover two flat zone on the table route. Man, that would have been a nice cap to this game. So 17-7. It's third and goal. He goes five wide. And we want to get ourselves in a, a zone defense here that's going to allow us to stop any quarterback scrambles. He can't really run the ball. Um, our camera gets all jacked up. But we're able to recover. We got purples, purples, hooks, shade underneath coverage, shade underneath coverage, waiting on the play. And my whole thing was like, I don't want to get beat by a playmaker. I don't want to get beat by a playmaker. I saw him playmaker. I was using right there, but I couldn't get where I needed to be. I was in good position, aside from not making the play. I guess I needed to be two steps to the right, but I felt like laterally and strafe-wise, I was in good position. But that hurts, because that makes it 14-17. And, uh, oh, Eddie Royal can't get us another... Uh, TD and now we got a drive where we got to move because he's within a field goal and uh, this one's gonna hurt if we lose because we should have been up 17 nothing 
with a QB sneak. We got a free kick return. And then we even made him turn it over in the second half. So this one's going to be be rough, especially just with all the playmakers. But I like his style. And this is draft champs at its finest. We take a sack on first down. And right now I'm like, uh-oh. I have the lead, and I'm like, uh-oh. So that's a bad attitude. But I'm like, man, he's just calling cover zero. Like, I got to free somebody up to get one-on-one -on -one in and. I can't let this guy call cover zero and make plays. Um, I need to get the ball out. So right here, we go to the play we hit for a touchdown earlier. We get one-on-one -on -one coverage downfield, uh, and we drop the ball. That's Rodgers. That's not his team of the week. That's only his road to the playoffs. So that's not the best option. We've already had one one-on-one -on -one catch in our favor. We don't get a second one. Third and 19, I'm like, what am I going to do on third and 19? There's not much really you can do uh, in this situation especially he's in a uh, <clears throat> backed off coverage doesn't look like he's going to be too aggressive in this situation so try and be patient with Walter Payton we go in the seam to Alshon and he gets a second defender over there to break it up and now we got a punt and so that sack on first down really set the tone we haven't run inside zone much because he's been able to slow it down and um, this is going to be bad 17-14 we punt decent punt he picks it up we miss a tackle and he takes it down inside uh, by the 40 yard line so ah, twin 176 game of the week this is draft champions play a friend uh there's a guy joel on my friends list just saw, i just not sure who it was sent him an invite he turns out to be good at the game and now we're locked in a dogfight i'm the giants i'm up 17 14 but he's got the ball and now he's coming out in goal line and he's just going to try and he's already in field goal range. He's going to try and run the clock as low as possible, not give me any time. And I kind of like this attack, especially in draft champs. Like this wouldn't really maybe work as well in Mutt because, you know, you got dudes. But I have 3D linemen, but I have no linebackers. And my safeties besides Pryor aren't big hitters. And he's got Curtis Martin, who's a legend. And he's got a legend center. He's got a really good center, too and I'm winning. I've been winning the entire game, but I'm like, I haven't been able to put a clamp on it, and it's driving me nuts. Um, here he tries to go off the edge. He breaks one tackle with Curtis Martin, and he's, I think, chewing clock now. And so this game is going to come to a head because he can always kick a field goal no matter what. If he scores, I'm in bad position. If the clock runs really, really low, I'm also in bad position. And first downs are going to let that happen. So it's second and nine. He's got to snap it before there, and he doesn't. So I was trying to time the play clock, but he never snapped it. So now it's second and 14, which is good for me. But he stays in goal line on second and 14 with three seconds left. I got all my timeouts, which is good. I don't want to get beat by a toss. He passes. Uh, and we make a tackle, and now it's a third and eight uh, situation. So right there, we had a purple dropped. We I think we shaded underneath. And this third and eight, he stays in goal line. He stays in goal line on third and eight, and he's going to pat the butt. Hands it off to Curtis Martin. We missed the tackle, but the pressure gets in, and now he's all the way back at the 30-yard line on fourth and 11, and he's going to go for it. And my number one thought is do not get beat by playmaker. Big dime is not going to work right here. Call the gas and don't get beat by playmaker. Just that's it. Like I was standing up in my basement right now. I'm extremely hyped. Don't get beat by playmaker. Send the pressure. Uh, pick it up. You got purples. You got purples. Send the spy. Send the spy. Send the spy. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. He beats me with the playmaker. I should have sent the spy maybe a little earlier. Uh, I don't know what happened right there. He, he chooses not to score. Now we only got one minute left in the game. And I got to start taking my timeouts. He doesn't want to score. We stop him. We take our first time out with 50 seconds left. 
The touchdown's gonna put him up four, not let me get a field goal, and I'm just crushed. Like, I'm crushed right now because we should have been doing way better. Then he used the QB sneak little questionable move that we talked about on the on the challenge. I didn't like seeing that because I got stuffed twice on QB sneak, and then he went with that little maneuver right there. I saw it. I, I was fired up. I'm so fired up right now. 21-17. Uh, I got two timeouts, though, in 50 seconds. So the good news is I still had two timeouts. I'm like, I need a big kick return, Eddie Royal. One time. I cannot lose. I was up 17. I was up 17-7. Eddie Royal can't get to the edge, and now I'm at my own 20 with 47 seconds. Uh, can't run inside zone. Let's go to gun doubles. He knows what's going to happen when we go to gun split close. At least that's what I thought. So we're going to go with gun doubles. We got Walter Payton quarterback, and this is not the ideal situation you want to be in when you got to pass the ball with Walter Payton. Pats have no read options, though, so I couldn't really do that. And here we hit R1 to the flat, and he gets a block, and David Johnson gets to the edge, and he is going to go all the way down and get knocked out. of. He stayed in bounds, which, oh, man, I was not happy that he stayed in bounds. So we call hurry up. We're in gun doubles. Uh, we're going to hike the play as quick as we possibly can, and what we're going to do is scramble with Walter Payton. We don't have time to motion the guy over. He goes there, and that's where you get a Walter Payton. And we almost considered not trying to get the slide in, uh, but we didn't want to fumble. Now I'm like, man, we probably could have scored a TD. It's really hard to score within the nine-yard line and in, especially because you don't have the accuracy rating with Peyton to throw like a high point passes. So I go to the halfback angle route, and I streak out Sean Jeffrey. Clear things out. I'm going to hit the angle underneath. At the snap of the ball, Jeffrey is actually open. I throw it to him real quick. Ah, I don't want to aggressive, but he catches it anyway. Cuts up into the end zone. I thought I was going to get tackled at the two and have to use my last time out, but Jeffrey gets in for the score, and we go up 24-21. Three clutch plays right there. Man, that was big, and whew, big, big, big to come back uh, with 50 seconds left. The halfback route was also going to be open, but the Jeffrey route was just was nice and quick and I took him off the streak and put him on a slant 13 seconds left in the half he has three timeouts or in the entire game he has three timeouts so I can't let him beat me with a playmaker like I can let him take a lot of time in the pocket but if he picks up you know a decent chunk of yards like we're gonna be he might have a chance at a field goal so I do go to man up three deep because all my dudes are pretty low rated and I want to use her McLean. He hands off the ball. I did not pass commit, and I did not not blitz three. So I, I am okay in the run game, and that helps. That helps because if you pass commit there, you get pancakes. He could crib that or at least get a huge gain. With seven seconds left, I'm in the same defense. I get on a uh, defensive lineman. He throws across the middle, and he almost breaks a big tackle. Now there's two seconds left, but he's still not in field goal range because of draft champions kickers. And right here, I'm in man up three deep. I'm going to contain. I'm going to get back. I can't get hit right here. I need two guys on every body. Let's go. Let's make a big play right here. Whew. But I don't feel good about where he is on the field because he can definitely hit the end zone. I know he's probably going to wheel that halfback. He's going to have a, a He's going to try and get a one-on-one -on -one throw. And it's going to be right there. But Matt Ryan, I think, stepped across. And we chase him down just in time. He was starting to get in the red zone, but we're able to tackle Matt Ryan with no time left in the game. And we get the draft champs win 24-21. A great game against our opponent. Appreciate him just being on the friends list and being available to play here on this week in Madden Show 176. Uh, he hit me up and said, good game. I hit him back and said, good game. I was like, are you on Twitter? Because... I never heard. I don't know. I just I like to know people in the community that play the game. David Johnson, you saw him on that huge play right there. Aside from getting tackled and bounce, a really, really nice play from him. And that flat route, it was open early in the game, and we didn't take it. But at the end of the game, it was there for us when we needed it. Man, I felt like we should have just had that game, but we had to fight for it, and sometimes... Those are the best ones. So 
Um, we'll take a look at the Johnson route. You'll see Peyton here under center. Flat gets open. We get the block. First guy misses the tackle. Second guy gets picked up, and Johnson has 95 speed. He's going to pick up a ton of yards before he gets tackled. The run by Peyton was really clutch. We hadn't really used him mobility-wise. Um, right here, we slant to Alshon. We wanted to hit the, the, the angle route. The angle route was definitely open, as you saw, but who knows? Like That guy could cut back and cover the angle route, or he could get tackled there. So just going to Jeffrey was good. I was a little concerned about the pass lead, but thankfully when he caught it aggressively, he, he went forward for the touchdown. Um, Eddie Royal, <clears throat> at the end of the half with one second left, poor Joel's got to be kind of sick about this one. 102 yards, crib it, boom, with the with the juke cut. Ah, breaks the, tacker, uh, breaks the kicker tackle. Man, that saved me. I was real upset about not getting the uh, QB sneak. That was good QB sneak D. Uh, this is Green Beckham one-on-one. -on -one. Know your silvers. Know your silvers, man. That's that's the truth in draft champs. We get hit on, uh, I think that's Raheem Moore, who we drafted. Pretty decent zone coverage, but he makes the one-on-one -on -one catch. Bryce Butler here with this playmaker. I mean, I felt like I... He did a good job lobbing it, but usually when they lob it, then the free safety will break down on the ball and get the pick. Um, but he he had very, very good playmakers, and that's when you're playing draft champs, something you need because every game is going to be a little bit different. I like that he went five wide. It matched up pretty nicely with his personnel and was still able to get Curtis Martin some carries late. Uh, here was the QB sneaks. Man, that hurt. That hurt with Walter Payton at the end of the half. That would have really giving us a good advantage. Um, this Richard Rodgers dot was nice. Uh, this pick by Calvin Pryor was good. This was the first play of the game for us on defense um, as he broke and made the play. So that was similar to the play we didn't make, but heck of a game. Here you see the Richard Rodgers dot touchdown. And a big thanks to my opponent for just being available. Uh, that is going to be pretty much it for this week in Madden 176. I want to go over the Madden Challenge. I appreciate all you guys stopping by to support that stream last Friday. We had great gameplay from Problem, of course. Serious Mo. Shugs was looking good, too, in that tournament. We had uh, some guys from the old Madden Invitational tournaments, the Mutt uh, Championships, guys like T-Raw, guys like Tweezy. Uh, I was able to catch their games against... The, the two that weren't broadcast, they played well in those. Uh, Tweezy fought really hard against Problem. And, of course, had a tough game against uh, Neff where he lost on the last second field goal. But I was really impressed with what Tweezy did against Problem uh, in the first half of that game on defense. And that's something I want to go into even more. Some other guys that played in the Madden Challenge. You had, uh, like I said, Mo got that Raiders playbook. And at that point, I was like, okay, he's going to be looking really good from here on out. Um, Shug's got all his CBs that he likes to get, so I felt good about that. I would say things to go back and look for are um, how Mo ran his dime. I faced that dime before. It's really good. Um, how they all really wanted to draft receivers. Who else was there? Um, yeah, just, just watching them adapt. They all cared about defense. I kept going, like, what playbook do you want to get? And they kept going deep. Whatever you know, whatever their defense it was was the ones they were talking about. They'll figure like I'll figure out the offense. I, I want to get a receiver. I don't. They didn't really care about quarterback all that much. They just wanted receivers. Um, I think it's too hard to wait for the quarterback in the legend round. I think is sort of what happens with that. Like you don't want to wait not take a quarterback and then hope you get a quarterback in the ledger round because the odds are that, you know, you might not get one. So that they seem to all want to just get a receiver, and the odds are you probably get a, maybe a crack at a receiver. So I was impressed with Problems Draft. He passed on uh, Sharp for a CB or for a uh, John Randall, I think it was, in the legend round. Uh, he, he, had a, he had a really good draft, but then he had, he had a couple tough – decisions that I like that he made. So uh, Tweezy had a, a tough draft playbook-wise. I kind of was bummed that 
he got Minnesota was his best option. I think he had Texans, which I'm not a fan of, and uh, one other. Um, so him him having Vikings, I felt like put him, you know, he went home and labbed it. He'll he was still able to compete with with problem really tough in that game, and uh, you know the Neff game was a field goal with no time left game. So no, and then he won his other game. So you know it's tough, man. That Madden Challenge stage is bright. Uh, the lights are big. We're about to have the open challenge, which I'm really excited to see how those guys play and see some guys who I haven't quite seen enough of. Uh, they're going to have to compete in a tournament to get in to earn their spot, and then uh, they'll, they'll get their chance, if they can make it to San Francisco, to to take on the best. So that's that's great. It's going to be really good going forward. If you have, I want to talk more about the Madden Challenge in the individual games and everything, so hit me up if you guys have thoughts too on that all right brain trust people subs to the channel make sure to go and check out the facebook group ad robs has some uh offense in there somebody else posted a three four blitz in there um we'll come up with some more content for you know m stack has another video he wants to get out for the titans playbook so maybe by saturday that will be something that you guys will see in your inbox keep posted to those twitch messages and if you're a new sub tonight or you're on YouTube and you want to sub, email me when you do, zfarls at maddentips.com. We'll get you set up with all the old 335 odd defense. We'll get you set up with the whole Titans M stack scheme. We'll get you set up with Zan's I form close. We'll get you set up with uh, the, the MUT database value sheet. We'll get you everything you need to become better. If you just get in the game for Christmas, uh, let us know. We'll get you up to speed fast. All right, Twim176, another good one in the books. Appreciate you guys being here with us, and we'll see you next week for another exciting edition of This Week in Madden. And uh, looking forward to the new year. It's going to be another good one. This is always the time where I reflect back. I'm not a very reflective guy, but uh, the Madden community for the last four years has been my home. And uh, it's at this point... You know, when I come home for the holidays, I realize that uh, everything you guys help me build is what, when I look back on the year, what makes uh, the year special. Like when I when I'm at a uh, New Year's party, I'm like, man, this year was good because the Madden community was good, and um, we're doing what I think are is are some really cool things, and so. This is when I get the most sentimental. And I appreciate every uh, thing you guys do. So follow the channel, and we'll be here for you 2016. It'll be another big year. Until next time, guys, stay hungry and lock up.